Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Giuseppina, and I'm an intuitive healer, holistic practitioner. Um, I talk about topics that have to do with healing, spirituality, um, subconscious programming, narcissistic abuse, and healing from that, as well as autism. So uh, if you don't already, please like and subscribe um, to my channel. I would really appreciate that so much. Thank you. So today's topic is actually about um, autistic people and them being naive. <laughs> so this is a, a really big one for me because this is something that has been like a problem for me my entire life, I would say. Um, and something maybe that I wasn't really aware of until like recently. I mean, I'm aware of it because like my sister would always tease me about it and say, you're so gullible because she would just like think it's hilarious to tell me these like really weird things all the time. And I would be like, what really like, and then she'd be like oh my god you're so gullible and laugh and laugh and laugh <laughs> but here's the thing um this can be dangerous which is why a lot of us end up being um you know manipulated and and really fall prey to these like type really not very good uh types of dynamics whether they're friendships or uh, situations at work or even relationships um and it's because we do tend to be really gullible and naive for a number of reasons. And uh, one of those reasons is our inability to read social cues. Um, so yeah, autistic people have a hard time uh, reading social cues. Now, these are things that uh, I've struggled with my whole life. Now, keep in mind that I only learned that I'm autistic last year. And so finally, like understanding what those things that are that have been occurring my entire life has been like really eye-opening for me it's also helped me to uh discern stuff that's like occurring around me because these are things that I did not discern before and I never understood why these things were happening around me I didn't understand like all these situations that were constantly happening and I did not understand like I said why how and what to do about it so now when you start to like learn these things about what's going on with you this is very helpful because it helps you to like i said um, in previous videos when you are someone who is undiagnosed autistic you are going through life um blind <laughs> because you're going through life and not understanding why you're having all these obstacles why you feel like this is not the world for you there was a loud noise outside and it scared my cat and why all these things are occurring and why you keep tripping and getting ditches and things like that whereas like when you learn you're or you're autistic you're finally like given a map and so like okay you know you finally have the correct map let's just say because you're giving a neuro you're given a neurotypical map and everyone's doing fine and you're not you're like floundering and totally drowning and doing this in secret and having no idea what the hell's going on so one of the things is about being naive and gullible so not being able to read social cues um when we don't know like when people's behaviors and things like that um when they do something and we don't it's so hard for us especially because we are I feel like this is because we are on all the time and because autistic people have generally have like a, like a shit ton more neurons in their brains that neurotypical, neurotypical people do. And so as a result of that, we are processing so many things at the same time sim simultaneously. So when someone presents us something, <laughs> we are taking what they're saying to us as a whole right there at face value we are not looking into the other things behind because we're actually like looking at everything else at the same time and so this is why um autistic people take a while to process something and why you might be doing something or an interaction happens with someone and then maybe days later you might be like oh crap is that what they meant by that or is that, did that happen or did that person like because we process things a little bit slower because of that because we have so many other processes <laughs> happening at the same time but anyways um so when we don't read these social cues it's because we can't understand them because um we we just don't because of the, our own processes that are happening like simultaneously like i said we're just constantly overwhelmed with like a million things occurring at that instant so we don't have the the power to, not power the energy or whatever you want to call it to absorb 
all the other things that you're trying to say. That's number one. But number two, also because we don't think that someone is trying to like F with us and like give us like false information because we generally are not people who lie. We're generally people who are very straightforward and blunt. Most of us are quite blunt and we're very truthful. We're very authentic. We're very honest. And so this idea that people are not presenting, um, you know, truth to us is not something that we can fathom because we um, have this expectation that people are presenting themselves like we present ourselves, which could not be furthest from the truth. Uh, one of the quotes that always hits me the hardest is like, you expect people to show up like who you are and your biggest, is it your biggest mistake or your biggest, um, I don't know, whatever the quote is. Your biggest fault is that you expect people to show up as who you are, except they don't. They're not like who you are. And I have to tell you that I never understood that. Not that I didn't understand it, but I did not take it to heart as much as I did as when I learned that I was autistic. Because there's this container of who I am and how I present in my own inner world and how honestly how wonderful it is it is so incredibly wonderful and beautiful and you know this realization that other people are not like that they're not that same frequency they're not at that same um, energy that same wavelength in their brains they just don't operate in that same type of cont container and the fact that they will never be able to um, give me back that same type of I don't know that same type of interaction or reciprocate like what I'm offering because they're just not in that container and so I have this expectation when I you know uh, show up in a certain way that other people will but they won't because they just can't they're not they don't have that map either they don't have that programming and um, I remember seeing on on reddit and like a few other places how they said like what you know autistic people are like so pure all the time they're so pure and um I think like what that means is that a lot of us retain our like childlike um, wonder, our childlike qualities, because we don't have that programming that makes us, I guess, um, succumb to like this like model that they kind of you know, they hammer into you when you go to school and to be a certain way and that you're going to be an adult and this is the way you got to be and you're going to go through life and you have to <laughs> dress like this, be like this, act like this, produce like this. And we just don't fit into that mold. We never did. And so <laughs> we, um, because of that, we get to keep those magnificent qualities about uh, that everyone has. Let's face it, neurotypical people all have those qualities, except that they lose, they lost those along the way because they do end up fitting into that mold because of whatever reason. I'm not sure this isn't a discussion about that, but most neurodivergent people will not have that, especially autistic people. We retain that quality of us. We stay in that container of this pure, like, uh, jovial energy, and so... Because of that, you know, when you think about children, like how trusting they are of others and that I'm showing you this, like I have a pink pen in my hand. Here's my pink pen. And so when someone's like, I have a pink pen in my hand, you're like, okay, he has a pink pen in his hand, except he doesn't have a pink pen and he's full of shit and he's trying to con you and stuff. So there's this like interaction that happens where, you know, every time we see people, we always see them in our light and our light is a certain way and unfortunately we cannot view other people in that way because they are not that way and this is a hard lesson for me to learn because immediately when I interact with people and we have the potential to see like um the broader aspect of things we have the potential to see sorry we have the ability to see people in their full capacity like their potential of who they are um but we also have the ability to project our own light and pureness onto other people which unfortunately is something that gets us um in trouble because then we get disappointed we get hurt we get used we get manipulated we get conned and all those other lovely you know words to describe being receiving like the shit end of the stick and feeling hurt 
So uh, what do we do? <laughs> I don't know. We learn to discern and to not like, you know, we're so easy to open up and trust because of how we are. And it's we have to just learn not to be like that. But there's a fine line between wanting to not lose that ability of who, you know, of who we are, of this pure energy that is just like, I want to be open and trusting. I want to be like someone who sees the good in everyone. But it requires us to make really strong boundaries, unfortunately, and to really learn how to vocalize when someone says something that makes you uncomfortable and to ask for clarification, to say no, and to also um, make sure that there's time in between things. Give people time to process. Give yourself time to process because you might not, like if you have an interaction with someone, you may not, may, you may not realize like what the intentions were in that moment, but then maybe like a few days pass and you will realize like, oh wait, like I think they meant that. So those are some things that are really important. So if you're someone who is, you know, autistic and you struggle with um, always feeling like you're too naive and gullible, then those are some things that are you're going to have to learn how to do, unfortunately, because I don't want to be someone who shuts off and doesn't allow people in and loses those parts of myself and, and shows up in this like rigid, like, I mean, rigid, I am rigid just <laughs> in different ways, but I don't want to be in this closed off, like, place where I don't let people in and, and I show up as this like cold fenced off version of me especially since I've lived my whole life masking and I'm starting to unmask and be who I am in all the quirky glory you know of who I am and that excitement so I don't want to I'm not interested in showing up in a different version of me to protect myself so in order for me to be able to be who I am and to retain those parts of me, it's going to be important for me to do those three things, like I said. So you're going to have to learn how to place, again, firm boundaries. You're going to, have to, learn, how to, you're going to have to learn how to ask for clarification. And you're going to have to learn how to say, like, no and things like that. And then I also said, I don't know if it's the three, but I also said, um, give yourself time to process information instead of, like, don't rush things. Being Rushing into things is going to be dangerous, especially when people who are like manipulative will like to rush things and, you know, they'll show you like all these wonderful things at first or say wonderful things to you at first, whether it's like your workplace or someone who's a romantic interest or friend, they'll like make it seem so grand and wonderful at once. And the problem is that like, it's fine if you're with other autistic people and that's just how we operate. We're just like free flowing, like <laughs> rainbows burping at one another. <laughs> but if you're not with someone who's like that, then they can be using that tactic and, sh and mirroring back to you those things about you in order to kind of snag you and con you. So it's something to be very mindful of. Um, so anyways, I'd love to know what your experience with this is. My experience, obviously, is that I end up getting duped time and time and again because of it, unfortunately. And so it's a learning process. The good news is that I'm able to spot it immediately. And because I've learned how to place those boundaries, because I've learned how to speak up and, and say things, ask things, say no, and have requirements and all those things, they have helped me. Now, Keep in mind that this is also tied in with my people-pleasing programming where I was unable to ask those things in the past. But now I know that it's mandatory. I have to, especially because of who I am and um, how I operate and because I'm so trusting and I have this heart that is just like, thinks I see the good in everyone and how like their potential and, um, you know, I see things at a different frequency and of love. And so I have to not... Um, I can't project that uh, energy onto other people. I have to really like give myself the space and time to see things for how they really are. And that is something I'm learning how to do very slowly, unfortunately, but it's okay. I'm getting there because where I am now is so much further than where I was in the past. And that is amazing. And I'm super grateful for that. So yeah, if you want to share your experiences with how you have um, experienced this in your own life and what you've done to help yourself with these situations. I would really, really love, uh, yeah, some conversation in the comments about that.
Anyways, I hope you're having an awesome day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and that's it. Take care. Bye. <laughs>